Adding a distressed texture to your image is a great way to give it that vintage feel. Today we'll look at several different techniques to do this, depending on what type of graphics you have. So let's jump in. What's up guys, it's Trent, and today we're gonna to look at how to add textures to your designs in Affinity Designer. Now texture can mean several different things depending on what you're trying to do. Today I'm talking about how to actually use a texture to subtract something out of your image and to make part of it look more transparent, like give it scratches or cracks or little tears, which kind of gives it a more vintage look. This is a pretty common style for things like print on demand t-shirts, so we'll look at it from that perspective. If you have other ways you wanna see textures used, feel free to leave a comment below and I'll add it to my list. But going into today's video, there's basically three things I wanna show you. Vector textures, transparent PNG textures, and solid JPEG bitmap textures. So let's look at vector textures first. Now, I have this design here. It's a vector design, and I'll be using this for all my examples. It's kind of one of these retro 70s sun designs that are pretty popular these days. Let's say I wanna add some texture to it to make it a little more roughed up and give it a little more style. So you can search for vector textures online. A place I really like is Creative Fabrica. I've had a subscription there for about two years now and I use it literally every single day. They have tons of vector graphics, PNGs, fonts, you name it, it's there. So I'll put a link in the description. Right now they have a sale for $59 per year for unlimited access and they have POD licenses too. So I think it's really a simple decision to make if you're a designer and you want unlimited access to these assets. So I'll search for distressed textures here and see what I can find. And you can see there's tons of different options here. I can actually say vector also to narrow it down. And this one looks pretty good. You can preview the different images here. If you don't like that one, there's others you can get. And they're all freely available to download once you have a subscription. So I'll find one I like and then we'll go back to Affinity Designer. So I downloaded and unzipped one of these texture packs and let's go and look inside of it. Now you can see there's different folders here. The vector one sounds promising. So you can see there's AI and EPS files. And this is pretty common when you download things from the web. They may be in Adobe Illustrator or this type of PostScript file. Now, thankfully, Affinity Designer is pretty good at reading both of them. Let's go into the EPS folder and I'll click this first one. Let's open it with Affinity Designer. And it's loaded here so I can zoom in and I can see the different texture files. Let's open the Adobe Illustrator one also just to see what it looks like. It should look the same. And you can see it looks pretty similar. The Adobe Illustrator one is separated on different artboards, whereas the EPS one is just all on one artboard here. Here's another one of the files I opened, and I think I like this first one over here. This one seems like it's a pretty good match for what I'm going for, so I'm just gonna select all of it. You can see I can move it around. I'm just gonna do Control C, and I'm just gonna paste it into my design over here. Now you can see it came in as two groups. It didn't really matter. I'll just group the whole thing together, and I'll call this the texture. Now what I can do is I can rotate the texture around and I can also resize it. Now if I zoom into the texture and if I really double click into it, you can see the individual pieces are shapes and curves here. Now this doesn't really matter for our purposes, but it's just kind of interesting to note. Now this texture is behaving pretty well on my computer, but sometimes you get textures with thousands and thousands of tiny little pieces in them and they can certainly slow down your computer a bit, but this one so far it's behaving well. It seems relatively simple. So what I'll do now is I'll position my texture roughly where I want it. It doesn't have to be exact because we have the ability to change it later, but I'll get it somewhere in the area. And now what I'll do to make it actually take the effect is I'll change the blend mode of this texture. So I have it selected and what I'll do is I'll click this button here and I'll go all the way to the bottom and I'll say erase. Now if I zoom in, you can see the texture has actually erased itself out of my design below it. And I can still move the texture around if I wanna reposition it. I think there's pretty good for now, so we'll just leave it there. Now to give you a better idea of what's happening, I'm gonna change the background of this composition to transparent. So what I'll do is I'll do document setup. On the color tab, I'll check transparent background. If I click okay now. So now if I zoom in, you can see that it did actually make my design transparent. And once again, I can still move it around. Now let's look at one other scenario. Let's say I wanted to have this distressed texture, but I wanted to have a black background. So I'll put a black background behind it. And I'll put it down below here. Now you can see my texture is erasing the background also. That's because when the texture is on top here, the erase blend mode is just erasing everything straight through your image. So if I zoom in, I'm getting transparency here too. What if I just wanted to make my design be distressed, but I still wanted to have the background be pure black. What you can do is you can group your design and texture together. So I'll select my design here. I'll select the texture and I'll just hit control G. And now you can see what happens is the texture is just affecting my design. 
if I expand the group here, you can see the texture is erasing just my design there. If I drag the texture out, it'll do what it did before. It's erasing everything. But when you put it in the group, the effect is limited to just that group. So this is a pretty simple way to use a vector texture. We just use the erase blend mode. Now let's look at how to use a transparent PNG texture. Okay, so let's look at another common scenario, which is a transparent PNG. And I've opened one here in Affinity Photo. If we zoom in, we can see it's black on a transparent background. So what I'll do is I'll just copy this over to Affinity Designer and I reset my layout here. I'll rotate it and I'll put it in position. So I think there is pretty good. And the technique is pretty similar to what we did before. We can set the blend mode to erase. So with my texture selected here, I'll select the blend mode. I'll go down to erase. And we have nice transparency there. But if we zoom in closely, we can actually notice one problem. Let me go into the middle here. And what you notice is that there are certain pixels that are semi-transparent. So you can see these light orange areas here, they have semi-transparency. They're not fully solid and they're not fully transparent. And this could be a problem if you're doing something with print on demand. A lot of printers, they're good with fully transparent pixels and they're good with fully solid pixels. But when something is semi-transparent like this, they have a problem with it. Because what they do is they print a white underlayer for all the pixels that are going to be drawn. So when something is semi-transparent here, it may not be the color you expect it to be. It's gonna have some white printed under it. And if you're printing on something like a black t-shirt, that's gonna cause strange effects for these semi-transparent pixels in here. So the question is, how do we get rid of semi-transparent pixels? So let's look at how we can fix this. First, I'm gonna to go to the pixel persona. For the time being, I'll hide my texture and my design. So as an example, I'm gonna do a soft brush stroke here. Now, how would we get rid of these semi-transparent pixels here? Well, the way we can do that is with a curves adjustment. So with my pixel layer selected, I'll add a curves adjustment. Now, usually curves are used to change lights and darks, but we can also use it to change the alpha value. The alpha value being the transparency. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change this drop down here. I'm gonna select alpha and I can go one of two ways. I can max out all the alpha. So I can say nothing is semi-transparent. I'm dragging the slider up here and now everything is solid transparency. So let me reset it to what it was before. We had some areas that were semi-transparent, some areas that were fully solid. I'm dragging it now and I'm saying make everything fully solid. That's what happens when we push this line up. We're saying all the inputs max them out at top. So now if I zoom in on the edge, there's no transparent pixels, it's completely solid. Now I also could have gone the other way. I could have made everything zero and that gets rid of all the semi-transparent pixels and keeps only the solid pixels. So if I reset it, this area in the middle was the solid area. I dragged it down to get rid of all the semi-transparent pixels. So that's an example of what we can do with the curve slider to almost threshold the transparency in a way. So let me close this. I'll delete our pixel example. So with the texture, let me zoom in a bit here. And now this gray is the part we wanna get rid of. So let me add an adjustment here, the curves. And if I go to my alpha, and if you look at these gray curves, what happens is I can either get rid of them or I can make them solid black. So let's get rid of them. I'll go down here and now they're gone. We can scroll around and we can see I got rid of all the semi-transparent pixels. Now, one thing you'll notice is as you zoom in and out, sometimes Affinity Designer renders it in a strange way, but usually when you export the file, it looks fine. So with the curve set, let me now add my design. And once again, I'll go back to my texture layer here and I'll set the blend mode to erase. And we can see we're having the same effect as we had before. We've taken out nice solid pieces of our image and we've given it kind of this texture here. So that's a trick for using transparent PNGs. It basically works the same as the vector method. However, you should double check to make sure there's not semi-transparency. If there is, you can add a curve and then threshold it to get rid of those semi-transparent pixels. Okay, now let's look at a solid image. And this is a JPEG I've opened up and there's no transparency in JPEGs. This is a black and white image. So there's no transparency that we can take advantage of. Let me copy it into Affinity Designer and let's see how it goes. So I'll paste it over here. I'll rotate it. Now this example will work a little bit differently. If I say erase, it'll erase the whole thing because it's a solid image. So let me undo that. I'll put that back to normal. Now what we can do is we can use a mask. So what I'll do is I'll right click on my texture and I'll say rasterize to mask. So now I've created a mask and as we know, black conceals and white reveals. So my mask is actually cutting through my image here and it looks pretty good. I'll, I'll click on my texture. 
So we can see this is the mask effect that's happening. The black part is hiding my image. However, you may have noticed there's that problem again. Let me zoom in. We're getting semi-transparent pixels here. And that's because our image had levels of gray in it. So levels of gray in our mask are going to cause semi-transparency. So let me undo this. Now there's a really easy way to remove levels of gray in your image, and that's to add a threshold adjustment. So with my texture selected here, I'm gonna add an adjustment and I'll do threshold. And if you zoom in, you can see our image has turned to pure black and white. So let me toggle the threshold off. So if I turn it off, you can see there's these little parts of gray. If I turn the threshold back on, you can see it's cutting off between pure black and pure white. And with my adjustment here, I can determine where I want that cutoff to be. So you can adjust this to wherever you think makes your texture look best. I'll just leave it in the middle somewhere. I'll close it. And now with this applied, there's no levels of gray. We can go and we can look around our image. And now what I can do is I can right click on it and I can say rasterize to mask. And now if I zoom in, everything is fully solid or fully transparent. So let me look here. It looks pretty good. And I can still move the texture around if I want. Now, like before, if you wanted to have a black background, if you didn't want your texture to cut through your background, you would just group your texture and your design together. And that will limit the effect of the mask to just what's in this group. I have some videos on masks in Affinity Photo and Affinity Designer, so be sure to check them out if you're not quite sure how they work. I want to show you another example of a solid texture here. This one is basically white on black. So let me show you the other one. So the other one was black on white. This one is essentially white on black. And you might get textures in either format. So how do you deal with this? Well, let's bring it over to Affinity Designer. I'll copy it over. I'll paste it here and I'll rotate it. Now, if we want to invert an image, it's really easy in Affinity Designer. We just add an invert adjustment layer. So with my texture selected, I'll select the adjustment here. I'll select invert. And now it looks just like our black and white. So we can start to treat it like we did the previous example. Remember, we still have levels of gray in here, it looks like. So what I'll do is I'll add a threshold. And that looks pretty good. And once again, I'll right click on my texture and I'll rasterize to a mask. Zooming in, everything looks good. And this is the same as we had in the previous example. So what you want to remember here is if you have something where the blacks and whites are reversed from what you expect. So sometimes you expect this, but sometimes you get this. Just remember to use an invert adjustment layer. If you want textures and assets, I put a link down to Creative Fabrica in the description below. If you have any questions about the textures or there's any examples you want to see, feel free to leave a comment down below. As always, thanks for watching and see you in the next video.